With comminuted fractures of the calcaneus, there are basically two problems. Due to the intra-articular course of the fracture and the displaced bone fragments, the joint congruence is lost, and the whole morphology of the posterior portion of the foot is disturbed. This second problem involves the width of the hind foot, the height of the upper part of the ankle joint, and especially the alignment between the talus and the first metatarsal bone. In this exercise, we are performing the open reduction and fixation of a comminuted fracture of the calcaneus, comprising six displaced fragments, four of which have a joint-bearing function. The first is an extra-articular fragment of the greater tuberosity of the calcaneus. The second is an extra-articular lateral fragment of the wall of the calcaneus. The third is a joint-bearing fragment of the posterior facet of the calcaneus. The fourth is a medial joint-bearing fragment, comprising part of the posterior facet and the sustentaculum of the tali. The fifth is an anterior lateral joint-bearing fragment of the calcaneocuboid joint. And finally, the medial portion of the anterior calcaneal process, also joint-bearing corresponding to the calcaneocuboid joint. This sixth one is also displaced. Two important ligament structures should be mentioned. Here the fibulocalcaneal ligament. And here the anterior fibulotalar ligament. For this exercise, we will use the compact air drive with quick coupling for K wires. 1.2, 1.6, and 2.0 millimeter K wires, and 2.5 millimeter K wires with threaded tip. The sharp hook and a small periosteal elevator. A shunt screw with the universal chuck with T handle and the small reduction forceps. For the fixation, we use the compact air drive with quick coupling with the 2.5 and 3.5 millimeter drill bits and the corresponding drill guides. The depth gauge, 3.5 millimeter cortex screws, about 30 to 50 millimeters in length, and a calcaneous plate, which is adapted with the bending irons and bending pliers. The fracture model is a foam-embedded model. First, we mark the anatomical landmarks and the planned incision. Here, the lateral edge of the Achilles tendon. Here, the lateral malleolus. And the base of the fifth metatarsal bone. The skin incision is performed in two cuts, whereby the vertical cut is made parallel to and about 1 to 1.5 centimeter in front of the Achilles tendon. The horizontal cut is aligned with the fifth metatarsal bone. The two cuts are connected with a small curve. The scalpel is placed perpendicular to the skin and the incision goes down to the bony structures. A complete cutaneous, subcutaneous and periosteal flap is retracted proximally and held by three 2.5 millimeter K wires with threaded tip, which are inserted into the talus. The foam within the sinus tarsi is mobilized and removed. This corresponds to the lateral part of the interosseous ligament. On our model, we have to separate the different fragments and dislocate them. Applying manual varus stress on the posterior portion of the foot and retracting the lateral wall with the sharp hook, both joint-bearing fragments of the posterior facet are visualized. Here we can recognize the medial fragment of the posterior facet. The further mobilization of the fragments makes it possible to see the complete separation of the anterior calcaneal process from the posterior part of the calcaneus. We begin with the reduction of the posterior portion of the joint from medial to lateral. The medial fragment is reduced onto the articular surface of the talus and temporarily fixed to the talus with two 1.6 millimeter K wires.
By removing the periosteal elevator, we make sure that the K-wires have a good hold in the body of the talus. Now, using the sharp hook, the lateral posterior facet fragment is reduced anatomically onto the medial fragment and fixed to it with one horizontal K-wire. Minute reduction can be completed using the small reduction forceps. A second K-wire secures final reduction. Now the large extra-articular fragment of the greater tuberosity of the calcaneus is reduced onto the joint fragments. For this, we use a shant screw which is placed percutaneously through the heel. A sagittal stab incision above the heel. Pre-drilling with the 3.5 mm drill bit and the corresponding drill guide and insertion of a shunt screw with the universal chuck with T-handle. Reduction of the fragment of the greater tuberosity of the calcaneus is very difficult in our model because of the mechanical properties of the foam material. After satisfactory reduction of this extra-articular fragment, where the physiological valgus is particularly important. We secure this alignment using two two millimeter K wires placed through the skin. Removal of the shant screw. For completion of the still unsatisfactory reduction, we drill an additional hole using the 2.5 mm drill bit and use the small reduction forceps for minute reduction. Now the last fragment from the posterior portion of the calcaneus is fitted in the lateral wall. The anterior calcaneal process is reduced at the level of the calcaneocuboid joint with the small periosteal elevator under direct articular visual control. Preliminary K-wire fixation parallel to the articular surface. Reduction of the whole anterior calcaneal process on the posterior part of the calcaneus by means of the periosteal elevator and distraction of the tarsal sinus, whereby the landmark is the Gisan angle. Temporary K-wire fixation of the anterior calcaneus process to the posterior part of the calcaneus, and checking of the reduction on the Gisan angle. Now the plate fixation can be carried out. The plate, previously pre-bent with the bending iron and bending pliers, is placed in position. Primary fixation of the plate onto the anterior calcaneal process with a plate fixation screw, whereby alternatively, and depending on the course of the fracture, a plate lag screw could be used. Fixation of the plate onto the tuberosity of the calcaneus.
fixation of the plate onto the articular portions of the fracture fragments, whereby here a lag screw is usually indicated. Final fixation of the plate with further strategic screws in order to ensure a rotationally stable fixation. For this, the temporary K wires are successively removed. After removal of all the K wires, a visual and palpatory check of the surfaces of the calcaneocuboid joint in the posterior facet of the calcaneus are undertaken.